Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. I'm Theo and in this tutorial we will explore the Xenio KNX gateway for bidirectional control of Daikin air conditioning units. Let's begin with the unboxing. Inside the box you will find the installation guide, and the KNX gateway. On the front of the device, you will find the KNX programming button and the programming LED. On the bottom of the device, you will find the KNX connector. On top, there is a two-wire communication with the HVAC unit and two analog digital inputs for temperature probes, motion sensor or dry contact binary inputs. Before proceeding, let's take a look at the wiring diagram to make things clearer. The Daikin gateway requires, of course, a KNX bus connection. In your installation, you may likely have a cassette indoor unit like this one, so let's include it in the diagram. It's possible that you may also have a wired remote control like the one shown here. The wired remote control is connected to the terminals P1 and P2 of the indoor unit. The terminals P1 and P2 of the KNX gateway must also be connected to the terminals P1 and P2 of the indoor unit. The communication between the KNX gateway and the indoor unit is bidirectional, allowing you to send commands from KNX to the AC unit and receive feedback from AC unit to KNX. In an installation with both a wired remote control and a KNX gateway, it is important to establish one as the master and the other as a slave. If the wired remote control is set as the master, ClickDI must be configured as a slave, and vice versa. ClickDI also features two analog digital inputs, allowing you to connect accessories such as a Xenio temperature probe, a Xenio motion sensor, or a dry contact binary input. According to the installation manual, commons of different devices must not be connected together. So I guess that you cannot combine two different accessories, such as a temperature probe and a motion sensor. If any of you have attempted this, please share your experience in the comments below. Before purchasing ClickDI, please check first its compatibility table. On the products page, go to technical documentation and click on compatibility table. Let's proceed now with installation. First, let's start by connecting the P1 and P2 wires in the P1 and P2 terminal block of the ClickDI. Then, I will connect the KNX bus connector to ClickDI. Finally, I will mount the ClickDI in the DIN Rails electrical cabinet. ClickDI requires two rail units. It's time now for ETS6 programming. In ETS6, open catalog. Navigate to Xenio. Search for ClickDI. Drag and drop ClickDI version 2 into your project. Double click on ClickDI to open configuration window. Click on Parameters. In the General tab, enable AC Gateway. For this demo, we won't use inputs and logic functions. In the AC Gateway tab and Configuration, I will set my ClickDI as Master. Please remember that if your installation includes a wired remote control, it must be configured as Slave. In the Inter Unit model, you have two options VRV and Sky Air. If your installation includes several indoor AC units connected to a single outdoor unit and you select VRV option, only one main AC mode can be active. 
In this case, OneClick DI will serve as the master unit, allowing it to switch between active modes. The remaining Click DI gateways will act as slave units, each with specific available modes. To clarify, when the master unit is operating in heat mode, the operating modes in slave units will be heat and fan. And when the master unit is operating in cool mode, the operating modes in slave units will be cool, fan and dry modes. Selecting the VRV option will create the AC Operation Mode Management Status object to determine whether an indoor unit is configured as master or slave. In my installation, I will choose the Sky Air option. Click DI allows control of the AC unit operating mode through two one-byte objects, AC Mode and AC Mode Status. You can refer to the table below to check the operating modes and the corresponding object values. Additionally, when selecting the Simplified Mode option, you can use a 1-bit Cooling Heating object and Cooling Heating Status object to switch between Cooling by sending a value of 0 and Heating by sending a value of 1. I will choose three levels of fan speed. Since this AC unit does not have flaps, I will disable this option. The external reference temperature object receives temperature values from an external temperature probe. Please note that this object is available only when Click DI is configured as the master control. Since I don't have an external temperature probe, I will leave it disabled. The reference temperature status object receives temperature values from the AC unit, so I will enable it. The sending type defines how the reference temperature will be sent. When you select variation, the reference temperature will be sent on a 0.1 degree Celsius change with a 30 seconds delay after the previous one. I like this option, so I will choose it. In this video, I will skip the rest of the parameters and I will enable only scenes. If you need more details, please feel free to leave a comment. I will create two scenes. Scene 45 turns on the AC unit in cooling mode, sets the fan speed to the minimum and set the set point value to 26 degrees. Scene 46 turn off the AC unit and returns the mode to cooling. The next step is to link group objects with group addresses. The group address for the AC scenes. The group address for turning on and off the AC unit and its status. The set point group address and its status. The AC mode group address and its status. The fan speed group address and its status. The reference temperature status group address. The final step is to download configuration to device. This is the wired remote control before adding Click the eye gateway. As you notice, it's working fine. After adding the Click the eye, you may notice an error code U5 on the remote control's screen with the number 1 flashing. This code signifies a communication error between the indoor unit and the remote control. So, what's going on? Remember that we configured Click the eye as the master and by default the remote control is also set as the master. However, only one device can be the master and the other must be the slave. Since we've set Click the eye as the master, let's now configure the wired remote control as the slave. Here's how. Long press the decrease button until the number 1 on the screen changes to number 2. Now, the remote control is configured as slave and everything works as expected. And now the fun part. We will test the AC unit using Home Assistant.
To thank the members of Poseidon Tech that support us, I have created a video with Home Assistant configuration of Daikin Gateway, the one that I used in this video. Thank you all for your support. If anyone else wants to join, it's really simple. Just click on the join button that is below this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you find our tutorials helpful, don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with the upcoming KNX tutorials. Until then, happy KNXing and I will see you in the next episode.